All right, we are live here. One million cups on this beautiful Wednesday morning. I'm Rihanna Werner. I'm going to be your uh, moderator and MC today. So thank you for joining us live here at One Million Cups. I just have to show you guys, this is such a beautiful sight this morning. We have some wonderful people joining us today and I'm so excited for you to hear all about the resources and information we have in store for you. But first, check this out. We all have our coffee. Everybody hold up your coffee cups. And show the love, One Million Cups community right here. And this is what brings us together, is your One Million Cups, right? I got the orange, Brandy's holding up her shirt. We've got a few people in their shirts. It's, it's a beautiful morning. We are in the midst of some crazy times as a community, especially as a small business community. And we have taken the liberty of organizing some of the top brains in the Colorado Springs community to bring you the information that you need right here and right now. So before we get started, we've got a lot of information to feed to you through a fire hose, um, but we're ready to take on that charge and get it to you. There's, there's a few um, housekeeping things that we definitely need to get underway. First and foremost, our sponsor, a &B Bank. Thank you so much for sponsoring us. Although we may not be able to drink the lovely coffee that you purchased for us, we are still here in spirit, and we hope that you are joining us today. Eagle and Crane, again, same thing. I wish I was drinking your coffee right now. Um, but Mac over there, Eagle and Crane, thank you so much for all you do and fueling our community. Last but not least, every Wednesday at 9 a.m., with the exception of our virtual meetings, we meet at the warehouse. You guys, go to the warehouse and support the warehouse. They do wonderful things for our community and they've got a double whammy going on right now. They've got a lack of parking due to construction over at the soccer stadium, the switchback stadium. Plus now they've got this. So go over, grab some takeout, some carry out from the warehouse and show them their lo our love. Um, anyways, last but not least, in the comments section below, we are able to answer your questions. We've got Samantha Sargent right there watching you guys all live, and she's gonna be filtering all of your questions to us. This is gonna be a completely interactive experience, and we want you to get involved, and we want you to get the information that you need right here and right now. So to go ahead and get this party started, we're gonna be talking with a few of our, our community small business leaders and experts. Today, we've got Aitha McCollier from the, the Pikes Peak SBDC. And then we also have um, Tracy Marquez with the Pikes Peak Workforce Center. We have Chelsea Gaylord with the Colorado Springs EDC. And then we also have Yemi Mobilade with the Pikes Peak EDC joining us as well. So like I said, we have some of the brightest minds joining us and willing and able to help us understand the business landscape and what we need to know to prepare ourselves. So you guys, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Um, I'd like to just take a moment and have you guys just kind of Start down the line, introduce yourselves, tell us a little bit about what you see, and then um, you know, give it a few minutes, and then we're gonna jump into the panel discussion. How does that sound? All right, Aitha, we're gonna go ahead and start with you. All right, good morning, everyone. Happy One Million Cups Day. Um, Pikes Peak SBDC is super excited to be here today. We've been a large and long supporter of One Million Cups. When you're in on site at the warehouse, you drink out of our little cups that say Better Business Bureau and Small Business Development Center. Today I'm holding up your cup. Um, today is a very special day um, with the panel that you have. Um, we've all been working really closely together. The SBDC, specifically in times of disaster, um, gets a lot of phone calls. Um, our small business community means the world to us and our community, and this is when especially on this one. It's a little different than the three other disaster relief programs we've worked on. Um, our businesses are hurting and it's gonna be a long time for recovery. So the SBDC is here um, as a representative of local, state and federal levels. We're connected with all of them. Um, we're gonna talk about, I am going to talk about the resources and the support we're providing with our collaborating partners here on the panel today. 
Thank you, Aitha. We really appreciate you joining us today. Next, we have Tracy Marquez. Tracy, you wanna tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do? Great, thank you so much for having me. I'm Tracy Marquez, I'm the Executive Director of Pikes Peak Workforce Center. We are the region's uh, local jobs, American Job Center. We cover both El Paso, Teller County. We are federally funded and what we do is we help businesses um, find the talent that they need and we help um, job seekers find jobs and the town, you know, opportunities to succeed and get training in our local area. Um, this is very unique for us because we do have federal dollars that we're able to help get back into the economy to help upswing and, and help businesses with layoffs. I'll be able to talk about some of the unemployment options that companies have for loaning um, work share programs, and then also opportunities and things for job seekers to start thinking about now as far as getting the training that they need and really important for businesses to, to maintain the talent that they have. We know we have to adjust to our new norm and when we do, um, Pikes Peak Workforce Center will be here to help you. So I'm excited about this. Thank you so much. Okay, I'll go next. I'm Chelsea Gaylord and I'm with the City of Colorado Springs and I serve as the Senior Economic Development Specialist for the city. Generally what that means is that I promote job creation, business expansion, and private investment in the city. Um, in times like this, that shifts a little bit. And so instead of the expansion, we're really looking at how do we keep what we have. Um, our businesses, our small businesses are really important to us. And so we're doing everything we can on the city side uh, to make sure that we are putting into place what we can to help support. So you'll hear partnership um, over and over again throughout this entire uh, presentation because we're working so closely with the SBDC, with the Workforce Center, with the Colorado Springs Chamber and EDC, El Paso County, a number of different partners, local, state, and federal. Um, and so I'll be able to talk a little bit about the city's uh, business relief package that we're working on and a few other things, um, but know that the city of Colorado Springs is still serving our community and we're doing everything that we can to support you. Thank you for chiming in there really quick, Chelsea, and taking the, the bull by its horn as I had a few difficult or technical difficulties. Next, we've got Yemi Mobilade. Yemi, if you want to tell us a little bit about yourself. Thanks, Chelsea. Good morning. I, Chelsea is my colleague at the city, but before I say a little bit more about myself, I just want to mention that One Million Cups has a special place in my heart. It was uh, about five, six years ago that I presented to the community and about the wild goose and you guys were just so wonderful and had nothing but nice things to say about the wild goose. And since then we've opened up another business. But my actual day job and what, uh, uh, what I get to work on, on your behalf, um, and I'm speaking to the small business community, is I serve as a small business development administrator for the city of Colorado Springs. I love what I do, I love my job. I get to act as your representative within the city and hopefully translate um, some of that um, confusion between how the reality of small business works and how local government works. So I work on your behalf and I act as your, as your point of contact in the, in the city. Wow, you guys, thank you for all that you do. Thank you, Yummy. It's it's funny how most of us can relate to uh, kickstarting our businesses and it all comes back to the roots of one million cups here in the Pikes Peak region. Um, so thank you for that that little uh, tidbit. I'm sure a lot of us can, can, can marinate in that. So, and here we are, we're coming together not just in kickstarting our businesses, but right now it's it's about making our businesses function and keeping our businesses moving forward. And that's what it's all about. And One Million Cups community know that these people are working around the clock for us to help us gain a little sense of peace in what we're doing. So you guys, I'd like to go ahead and just start this panel discussion off with Aitha. And Aitha, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you guys are working on over at the SBDC? Sure, and if you don't mind, Rihanna, I think I'll go ahead and share my screen um, so we can give everyone a visual of what we've got going on here. That would be great, um, thanks. Okay, let's see. Does everyone see our website? 
I do not. Give me one second. There's a little delay on the Facebook feed. So if everyone's on there, there might be a small delay. There. How about that? There we go. We there gotcha. We go. Okay. So uh, I'm going to use this up uh, and, and give me, tell me when I need to be cut off. Okay. One million cups team because like we we all on this panel can talk quite a bit but uh, <laughs> deal how about we go with about five minutes okay that sounds good i'll, I'll right. still need a heads up 9 15 i'll be done all right i'm timing all right. yeah all right so small business development centers across the country are working on um there's about a thousand offices and our purpose is to always educate small business so everything that we do is educational uh, in this case, when it comes to disaster relief, the Colorado SBDC network is working as a team on four different committees. And we're working directly with the Office of Economic Development, the Small Business Administration, and all the different agencies um, from the local, um, state, and federal levels. And what we've done is we've compiled uh, this web page. Um, it's our preparedness and continuity page. As you can see, we've labeled it COVID-19. Uh, our office has dealt with three other major disasters in 2012 and 13. So we jumped on the opportunity to really make sure we're providing small business response resources as quickly as possible to our community of small businesses. So on this page, what's important to know is that there is a ton of information. So as a small business owner, we don't want a business owner business to get completely overwhelmed with this really look for the thing you need on this page. Uh, but we've tried to make it so that any of the information is understandable because any of our federal regulations or loan processes, they can be pretty confusing. So what we did was we've added, um, as you can see on this right side, if you can see, I'm not sure if you can see my little cursor rotating in circles over here <laughs> on the round table. Um, but we held an emergency response roundtable with 604, I believe, um, that actually got on the phone and over 2,000 that were interested and 800 that were registered. So we had about 600 people actually attend this uh, roundtable. The recording is here, so if you missed it, it's a really great panel of information from the Small Business Administration, uh, Colorado Department of Labor and Employment, that was, um, Tracy got them on the panel for us, Chelsea and Yemi, and then um, Corey Arcris, who's our lead disaster relief consultant. Um, Tracy, the Pikes Peak Workforce Center, that's BDC Rantis. This is something I really wanted to highlight because it really does have a ton of information in the video. This is, uh, and then going through, going through the rest of this, um, SBDC's main goal is to make sure businesses understand that even though there are a lot of different opportunities it's really important that you read this accessing, accessing federal funds section that I added last night. There are many things that can happen if you accept a grant with your private nonprofit or some kind of small business. You may not be eligible for SBA disaster loans. If you accept any other lines of credit, you may, or other types of loans, you may not be eligible for SBA disaster loans. So what this section is saying overall is that um, know what all your options are to help your business get through a disaster part, um, through, this, through this crisis. And then choose wisely on the one that you want, because one may make you ineligible for another, just in general. So it's really important to know that. Back when we had um, floods and fires, if you accepted FEMA dollars, you may not have been eligible for SBA disaster loans. Now, with all that doom and gloom said, it's really important that you apply no matter what. If you want a loan, just apply, get it in there. It's a national first come, first serve basis. This next session has, section has all the information you need to know on the economic injury disaster loans, which are now available in Colorado. We're putting a lot of answers to questions that we've been receiving in these drop down sections so is my business eligible we just i just added like 30 more onto that list of um, those that are or aren't criteria so as you can see it just keeps going and going and literally everything is there um, statewide resources the small business navigator actually has a hotline now if you're a small business and you need to know um, 
what to do next, there's a hotline number. So I'm out of time, but as you can see, there's federal resources, um, really great information direct from the source, no fake news here at the SVDC, um, but lots of really good, honest, trustworthy information, preparation tips, other loans and grants are some cool stuff coming up in the grant area. There's a lot of local initiatives. Chelsea could probably speak to some of that as well. Um, just really um, industry specific things. We have an area in Spanish, and then here's your resources in the Pikes Peak region. So in the end, SBDC is here to be your resource, um, your, your resource provider in this time of crisis, but also the consulting we are providing is the same every day. Our workshops are still going strong. All the workshops, One Million Cups people, all of them in April, about 15 to 20 of them will all be free and are virtual. So please keep that in mind and please sign up. It's business as usual at the SVDC um, and we'll help you strategize to get through this time of crisis. Thank you so much for having me today. Wow, Aitha, what you and your team are doing is just absolutely exceptional. Um, again, ton of information being fed through a fire hose. Um, one Million Cups community, I want you to remember one thing. This is a lot of information, but know who your resources are. Aitha and her team can answer any of your questions. You can also post questions below, so keep those questions coming in. Next, we've got Tracy Marquez. Tracy, do you want to hop in and tell us what you guys are up to at the Pikes Peak Workforce Center? Yes, thank you so much. Thank you for having us. Um, with the Workforce Center, we're just like Aitha. We are business as usual. Um, what we are doing is helping businesses with layoff aversion. What other type of options if you're having to reduce your staff, um, reduce the hours that you're working? We have um, staff available to be able to walk you through that, provide some virtual workshops, some information sessions. Um, this is our website here. What's really important, what I want to share with you is the Department of Labor. We know everyone is having to do the layoffs, reduction of staff, and you want to maintain that talent. So what options do businesses have? Um, some of the great information that has just been updated is all on the Colorado Department of Labor and Employment. Unemployment and resources is extremely important to be able to go to. We know right now with the federal package that is, um, I, they think, I think they passed it like 1 a.m. Um, Aitha was texting me or sent me an email on it. But that had $5.4 billion going to uh, local workforce centers and local boards. With the Workforce Center, for those, if you're in the Colorado Springs area, in the state of Colorado, every county by law is required to be associated with a workforce center. With that, these are going to be um, very important for you. This information here is with unemployment. The, they had a Monday morning, 189,000 people were attempted to access and file for unemployment. Um, the great thing that you know as a business is if your people are filing for unemployment, it will go into effect the day that it was, um, that they were laid off. If they were able to file for unemployment on Friday and uh, they were actually able to get through the system, but yet they were laid off last Monday, it will be retroactive till last Monday. Um, unemployment division at the state has also waived the one week wait period, which that just came down yesterday. And usually with unemployment, you have to have job searches for your people. That's no longer available too. What we're trying to do with some of these new dollars that we hope to receive from the federal government is to be able to have them have access to um, quick reemployment and retraining dollars. Our philosophy is let's go ahead and start utilizing this now to be able to. Um, up train, upskill your existing workforce center to get them what they need now. Um, with this, the two grants that are in the $5.4 billion for a local workforce board, one is an emergent and employment recovery dislocated worker um, grant to be able to retrain your staff. And the other one is a disaster recovery emergency grant funding that's going to be available. So once again, this is just great information for people to be able to use for employers if you click on employers, you want to know what can you do. If you need to post a job now and you need to interview, because there are industries that we're starting to see up swings in, your big box retailers, your takeout delivery, your cooks, um, we can go ahead and help you do a virtual hiring event where you can do virtual chat and online chatting. I know King Supers the other day was posted in the paper about what they're able to do and Let's do some virtual and create social distancing too. 
right here in the middle, layoff separations. This is really important for small businesses as far as, and any business as far as, okay, what kind of layoff opportunities can you do to help maintain? If you click on these, you can look at, okay, what options are available. They've had some great information. This is really important. If you apply for the WorkShare program, you will have your application processed within a week of receiving that information. So it's really vital, um, great information to be able to, to pay. This is constantly changing. A lot of this, this was changed yesterday. We're constantly receiving additional information. That's why this is just up here at the top. Um, resources that are available is really important that you're able to go to. So thank you very much for um, having us on here and our telephone number, website ppwfc.org has our telephone number on it and you're welcome to talk to any of our business relations team and they can help you get through what you need to, to have access to. Tracy, thank you so much. Wow, that was a lot of information and a lot of really good information. We will be posting contact information for all of our panelists. If you have any questions, reach out to them. I'm sure Tracy will be happy to oblige. She mentioned a lot of great information that you guys are doing in regards to unemployment, grants for you know reemployment, and so much more. Tracy, I do have a quick question for you. Um, and, and maybe selfishly, but hopefully I can help other people out there. I've been hearing a lot of reports out there about fraudulent unemployment claims. Is there anything that our, um, our community should know about that? You know, right now, the system is so backed up. You know, people cannot get on. The key, both Ethan and I have been talking about, is when you file for unemployment or you file for a disaster loan, save, save, save each screen as you go. The payments have not actually gone out yet. Um, so really check with Colorado Department of Labor and Employment, making sure it is that right website that you're going to and that you're filing for claims. If you have any questions whatsoever for businesses and people that are applying, call us at the Workforce Center. My staff is trained and ready to go and answer those questions on it. So it's really important. If you get something you think it's fraudulent and you want to know, call us, um, which is 667-3700. Once again, 667-3700. And our staff will be able to, to really li literally look at it right there on the screen and let you know if it's real or not. You guys are amazing and what you guys do is absolutely incredible for our community. Thank you, Tracy. Next up, we've got Chelsea Gaylord with the Colorado Springs EDC and she's going to talk with us about the city and their initiatives and the really cool things that they've been doing for us. Thank you for joining us, Chelsea. Great, thank you. Uh, so just like everybody else, we'll throw a lot of information at you, but we are here as a resource to share, share any of this afterwards too. So you're not expected to remember it all. Know the people, know the links, and, and we'll get you there. Um, so as I had mentioned, we are doing a lot of work um, with our partners to make sure that we are providing a unified, collaborative uh, front for all of our business owners across our region. Um, working with the Colorado Springs Chamber and EDC, the Pikes Peak S BDC, the Workforce Center, El Paso County, um, Visit Colorado Springs, all of the different uh, groups, downtown partnership, etc. cetera. Um, and so all of our businesses, first and foremost, need to know that we are all working together to, to support you. Um, and we, the chamber had released a survey last week that closed Monday evening from our business owners. So we're, we've got a lot of information that um, they're going through right now that will allow us to respond to the needs that our business owners are experiencing in this moment um, and be able to meet those on a unified front. Um, from the city side, we are working on a business relief package and some of those things have already begun to roll out. Uh, we did suspend the uh, parking meters and uh, parking garage costs and ticketing um, for downtown and old Colorado City until April 30th. This will allow um, businesses that are doing takeout, curbside delivery, things like that for them to be able to, their customers can pull up uh, and not have to worry about getting a ticket or paying a meter. So we're, we're supporting our, our businesses in that way. Um, we are also waiving the penalty and interest charges for late payments um, in February and March for our sales and use taxes for businesses um, who are unable to meet those due dates due to the impacts of COVID-19. Um, the February and March sales and use tax payment deadlines will still remain in place, um, but if you do need a waiver, those will be considered on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, 
and you can contact our sales tax department at 385-5903 or at sales tax at coloradosprings.gov and I'll share those links. Uh, we're also working with utilities and a few other um, of our enterprises to be able to include uh, their information in our business relief package as well. So uh, utilities has updated that they've moved their date from March 30th to April 30th, that they will not be disconnecting services. Um, they have, they also are now offering a skip a payment program. So if you are having issues with your utilities payments, please give them a call at 448 Four eight zero zero, and they'll be able to assist you as well. Um, the city uh, as a whole, we are in our economic development team, uh, Yemi, myself, and our two other teammates, we are working as a conduit for information. Um, so if you're having, uh, if you're trying to get a hold of the SBDC or the Workforce Center, or you've got questions for your um, restaurant on cleaning guidelines, we have that information and can direct you to the right place. If you're still uh, doing work around plans and permits for development and redevelopment projects, we can also give you the, the up-to-date information for our planning department and regional building. So we're happy to continue to be a conduit of that information for you. Um, the city has also gotten behind a grassroots effort called Support the Springs. And you can find that website at supportthesprings.com. This was built by entrepreneurs for our business community. Um, and the city is now an official partner of that. So we are sharing that information. Uh, this is a website that uh, is really a, a source of information and an opportunity for businesses who are offering alternative services, takeout, delivery, online um, fitness classes, things like that. Uh, if you're looking to donate or volunteer in the community, go to supportthesprings.com. There's a whole bunch of stuff there. It's a beautiful website. The team has really done a great job and we're really excited to promote that. Um, we're working with partners very closely on a number of different funding opportunities for our small businesses as well. Um, the Downtown Development Authority is looking at uh, some options for businesses downtown. Uh, we're working with the Pikes Peak Community Foundation on potentially setting up a fund for small businesses. And um, related to being able to access services, the state has been raising money. Um, Governor Polis has raised over $5 million. Applications are not yet available for that or where it will go. Um, so all of these things continue to evolve and more information is coming. Uh, we're also closely working with El Paso County and they are uh, working with the state to potentially set up a um, enterprise zone contribution project for businesses and in, in the enterprise zone specifically affected by COVID-19. They are hoping to make this a grant program um, because we're hearing uh, loans are great and a lot of our small businesses can't take on additional debt. So we are trying to be creative. We are working with our partners. We are hearing um, what our businesses are saying and doing our best to set up funds that provide a lot of different opportunities. And so uh, we're currently working with the county to be able to offer that. Uh, and so more details on all of those uh, different funds are evolving and will hopefully be live in the coming days. And so we can share those uh, as those become available too. Wow, Chelsea, I, you and the city are just leading the charge. I mean, I, it is so impressive to see everything that you guys have pulled together in such a short amount of time. So thank you so much for probably working around the clock for all of us small business owners and giving it your all. We really appreciate it. And viewers, if you have not been to Support the Springs website, I, I've been on it for the past day or two, it is incredible. Get on there. You can find resources, volunteer opportunities, you know, ways to support our community. It's, it's about our village. So get in there and, and support and take advantage of the free parking. It's not going to last forever. So get downtown and park for free because it's really nice. All right. Next up, we've got Yummy Mobile, Mobile Latte. Did I say that right, Yummy? You got it. I've been practicing. <laughs> you get a gold star. Oh, well, thank you. Um, Chelsea, thank you very much for your time. Yummy, it, this is a great transition. Yummy and Chelsea work closely together over at the EDC. And Yummy's going to bring it home to all of us as a small business owner. Um, he, he gets where we are. And I think we're all going to be able to relate to what he has to say. Thanks for joining us, Yummy. 
No problem. Thanks again for having me. To our small business community, um, business owners, we hear you, we see you, we, we feel your pain. I feel your pain. In fact, uh, yesterday was probably my uh, hardest day. I, 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 I heard from a number of you that are getting into a place of desperation. And so I, I want you to know that I, I feel it too, personally. So um, I'm, I'm empathizing with um, this, this season you're in, especially, you know, you didn't ask to be closed. You were, we were told to close our doors for, for good reasons, but it wasn't, uh, it, the choice wasn't ours. So you need to know that uh, I'm working on your behalf to serve as an advocate. What you need, what I'm hearing, and what you need is, is cash. You need money to stay afloat. You need money in this season of triage. You know, we're hoping, especially for those who have been um, um, most impacted, we're talking theaters, restaurants, cafes, gyms, uh, those type of businesses, um, those type of public businesses, you, uh, you've been impacted the most. And we're hoping that this ban does not, it's only through the end of next month, through the end of April, but we don't know for sure. But if that's, if that's the case, you need money right now to last you through that, that period of time. There are great grants and uh, there are great loans from the federal side, and I've heard it's challenging in some front, and you know, some of you have not, um, you, don't, you don't meet the criteria, the collateral criteria for some of those grants. And some of your CPAs have looked at the grants and have said, this, this, it's really difficult, I probably shouldn't pursue it. So here's what we're trying to do. We're trying to rally the local community, as Chelsea has um, already alluded to, some potential opportunities that will be coming. We're trying to rally the local community and local investors to create our own um, business relief fund. And hopefully that fund is part grant and is part microloans as well. So that's what we're working on. Um, the Pikes Peak Community Foundation is working on a version of that. There's a local business owner investor that is taking the charge and working on a local version of that. So there should be more work that is done around that today. My hope is that we have something to present to the business community that has been most impacted. Um, business owners that have um, let your, your, your employees, your staff member go or are, are thinking about doing that because you're at a point where there's no other course of action. Um, that's, that is, as, as unfortunate as, as it is, that is the only decision that is left. There's an organization, local organization, foundation called Joy to the World, um, joytotheworld.com. They have um, a benevolence arm of their organization, and they are taking it upon themselves to, um, to raise funds, so they're receiving funds and giving out funds to employees that have been affected by the closures. So they just started this week, and so you're going to have to give them some time to get the bearings. There's a lo there was a local um, funder that is interested in putting money into this foundation to see if we can get the money to some of those employees. So it's called Joy to the World Foundation. I called them. I've been speaking with them the last couple of days because I wanted to vet it just to make sure um, it's a legit foundation and they've been around the community for a while. Um, the Downtown Development Authority, as Chelsea um, talked about, by next week they should be having their own, um, their own their own program, grant funding for downtown businesses. So if your downtown business is just... Um, um, just be just be on the watch for that. Um, obviously, there's no guarantees with any of this, but you need to know that we're working on your behalf, and I feel that I feel that pain. I feel that pain directly, and so we're making all the right phone calls, riling all the right people, and I'm I'm feeling hopeful today that we should get something to the business community. Um. So I okay. Just some, just some nuts and bolts checklist. If you're a business owner and you have not talked to your supplier, make sure you talk to your supplier. Um, they're aware of what's happening. They're in the same boat. You know, negotiate smaller payments. You know, if you can delay payments, it helps you. Any way that you don't have to make any payments in the season is a win. If you haven't spoken with your insurance company, this one is really tricky because 
Uh, insurance companies are pushing back against the business uh, disruption in, um, policy, saying um, the coronavirus doesn't count, and that is true. But I can tell you, if um, you're a hard ass, I hope I can say that. <laughs> Don't give up. Don't take no for an answer. If you push, you can get it through. And I and, I, and I'm speaking from personal experience. Um, you didn't know that everything I'm telling you, I call my business partner who operates our business, both businesses, and he's testing all these things that I'm encouraging you guys to, to pursue. So they're going to tell you no, but you can push, especially if you have a good relationship with your agent. He'll be willing to make a case on your behalf. Uh, still no guarantees. If you haven't called your property owner, you need to do so. Have, a, have the conversation. Most likely the property owner can call their financial institution or bank and try to see if they can get some relief there as well. Um, scams, just be aware of all the scams that are popping out. Not every, double check everything. Just like I said, you know, when I talked about joining to the World Foundation, I wanted to make sure that it was a legit um, entity. A lot of people want to capitalize on the misfortunes of the economy and people. So protect yourself, protect your, your business, protect your employees and your loved ones. Um, if you pursue short-term financing, um, whether it's an SBA disaster loan or any of this opportunity, even when we do pursue, when we do come up with a local version of this, make sure you do, you just, you, you assess how much you need. You do the math in terms of how much you need to stay afloat and just borrow money that you really need. Um, it, that's really important. So think through what you're borrowing and think through the long impact. Have a backup plan. Have a, uh, between now and April 30th, you know, best case scenario, this is how much you need, we need to get us back up and running. But also have a forward-looking uh, forward plan. If, if we have to go through August, how much money do you need to, to last you through um, that season? Um, back wearing where my city hat, you need to know that uh, all the government services are open. We're still open for business. We're not slowing down. So if you are in the business development process, I talked to a couple of you yesterday who are in the process of opening up a business, um, and your business may not be open to July or August, know that we haven't stopped. We still want to help you. Submit your plans. Utilities is ready. Um, regional building is ready to work with you. The city planning and zoning, city clerk, we're still open for business, and we're not stopping or slowing down. We still want to help you open your business. Thank you so much, Yami. It's a lot of information, but I, I have a question for you because I think us as business owners, we've been fed a lot of information on what we need to do. And you know, it, it's a little overwhelming. If from your perspective, your unique perspective of working with the city, having that insider view and being a business owner, what would you say would be the first things first? What's the most important thing that we get ironed out today so we can set the good foundation of moving forward tomorrow. Yeah, it's um, two things. One is I've already talked about is plan, plan, plan. You know, when you are starting your business and Aita knows this, you know, we encourage that you create a business plan. It's your playbook, it's your Bible. It's everything that you need right now to move forward. Some of you, um, may your plans may be you might need to close up shop for the time being because the the pain of closing is less than the pain of staying open opening. And so what that what that plan could also mean is that you also have to um, lay off employees, which is one of the hardest things that we've had to do. And you may have to assess which employees you lay off. Perhaps there's a handful that you choose to still keep because they've been with you from the very beginning and they're your key. The, your key managers are key folks. So, you, um, and per, perhaps as a way you can you can furlough them or pay them part time for the time being, and it's worth paying them for the part time. And they get it. They 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 understand it. And part of the plan is also how you communicate what you're communicating to your team. You know, uh, is this a permanent layoff? Is this a temporary layoff? Do you want them back? What are what are the next steps for them, uh, including? When Tracy says the Pikes Peak Workforce Center wants to help you, she really means it. And giving them that number, you know, and checking up on them and making sure that they're doing okay. That's, that is, that is um, part of the plan. Assessing the short-term financing that you need. Looking at all the options and seeing which one is best 
for your business. Again, I would encourage, look at the plan through now, and these are for the ones that are most affected, between now and April 30th, and then also have a, a plan B, you know, for if this thing lasts through August, which POTUS was a, a one time saying, potentially through August. That's what we do as business people. We have, we have plan A all the way through plan Z. It's like your performance. You're looking at, you know, your, your year one, year two, year three. In this case, we're looking at month to month to month. And also best case scenarios, worst case uh, scenarios. So I, I would say that's uh, if you don't have a plan, yeah, and you're just doing one day at a time, you, you got to have a plan because if you have a plan, you will be able to weather this storm. Um, sometimes, uh, and let me, let me just tell you even from personal, we, we have two businesses. One of them we have to close and do those things I was telling you about with our team. The other business, our plan was, and God bless my business partner. He's done such a good job at this. We've been able to pivot. And the other cafe has now become a neighborhood market. You know, folks are buying neighborhood produce because we closed one business, took all the supplies, moved it to the other business. We had to sell those. And then the demand for neighborhood groceries and supplies have increased. And so we've been able to pivot in that sense. But we had to come back and create another, a plan for that. And the other thing I would tell you, and just real brief, would be please call the city. Please email Mayor Southers. Please email um, our office. Uh, um, Bob Cope is um, Chelsea, my boss. He's the chief economic development officer. Please email the chamber and EDC. Um, please email your elected officials, city council members, your, your state representative, because the more they hear from you, if you say we need cash, if you say we need grants, if it, they're going to respond to the things that you ask for. So that's really, really important because we don't know that you have those needs. Our leaders need to hear your needs and we will respond. So if you have five minutes, send one or uh, more of us an email with your most pressing needs and let us help you with your most pressing needs. Thank you. We appreciate that, Yami. That the huge relief knowing that you guys are here for us. Um, we're gonna go ahead and open this up to full on questions. I think we've got some comments and feedback. Sam, do you wanna jump in and um, let me know what's going on in Facebook Live? Um, everybody who's watching, all of you viewers, this is your time to get the information that you need. So please jump in, ask questions. Sam's right here to filter those questions on through to our panel. Yep. So no questions on there so far, everyone practicing their physical distance and being social here on Facebook. So say hi and um, stay connected that way. Many of us come from all parts of Colorado Springs. Um, the comment I wanted to make to Yemi as you're talking, I heard you say the word hope several times. So I want to just echo that and say thank you for giving hope. Our One Million Cups community is often referred to as a pep rally. And that's why we like to come together. That's why we decided to continue to be online so that we could be that first thing in the morning, a uh, ray of hope for everybody. So thank you for being a part of this. And I didn't have a question, but I know Tracy does. So I can just give it over to Tracy. <laughs> All right, so Tracy, I have a question here. How do we find out more about the grants that you mentioned? You know, right now, it will be on our website, which is a ppwfc.org, and also on social media and Facebook once we get those grants. Right now, we have, you know, you, know, you hate to say it, but, but we're government. And we have a lot of red tape. And so what I have asked the state, the Colorado Department of Labor and Employment is, let's cut the red, red tape for businesses. And let's figure out how we can get the money out quickly. We have grants right now that are available for, um, employee development grants. So if your example is if you're going to lay off or um, do a work share, we're going to lay off just part of your staff or for part of the time. And you're like, what training can I give my staff? I need cybersecurity training um, that I need to personally as a business owner take. How can I get some funding to help do online training options? So if you call our number, look at us up on the website, and we will be able to ask those questions to my staff. They'll take you to our business relations team, which is a seven-man team, and they'll be able to help and think creative with you 
on how I can get that training now. Um, so we are working through the processes as fast as we can, but give us a call. There's options out there, especially if your staff has been laid off, they're a dis dislocated worker, there are grants to be able to help train them and get them some additional skill sets. Wow, that's wonderful. Thank you so much. Yummy, I have a question for you. So you mentioned having a plan in place. How do business owners, usually business owners have a plan A, but this situation that we're in is not exactly a plan that we've accounted for. This probably isn't even plan D or <laughs> F. Um, so how do we go about, you know, going back to the, the, the grindstone and reinventing that plan for ourselves in our situation? Yeah, that's a, I, and that's a gr great question because I, I, just like you said, and I think it will agree with me that, um, it's, we can't, there's no class to teach you. There's no class we could have taught you ahead of time to more or less be ready for this current crisis. But I, I would say the tools that, that are in you and the tools that you have been taught, um, perhaps you when you attended an SBDC class, are still applicable. Um, understanding what's under the hood, you know, the, the nuts and bolts of, of, of your business and, I, and I'm speaking specifically your finances because that's what's been most impacted right now is you know for many of many small businesses your margins are already tight you know you don't have plenty of plenty of cash I also think there's a lot we can learn from this season maybe we, we can't do better um, in, in the future and, and have more emergency funds just because we never know if something like this will happen um, Lord willing, we don't ever have, this never happens again, but we just don't know what the future holds. So I, my biggest encouragement will be, go back to the days of your, start, your startup days. And that's a great thing about the One Million Cups community. I think um, for the most part, the One Million community, um, One Million Cups community still live and think and breathe as entrepreneurs. So go back to your entrepreneur, entrepreneur days where you had to bootstrap, where you had to figure out how to survive during your opening season. Um, a big thing I'm also encouraging folks to do is also thinking about your rebooting time, your, your reboot, when you're ready to reboot your business. So this, these are the folks that have had to close their doors and have had to give away or sell the inventory. And when you're ready to reopen, it's almost like you're starting again. You need that initial capital to reboot your business. So it wouldn't hurt to go back to some of your initial business plans and see what that was like when you were starting because you might need to go back and do some of those things again. I don't have the, I don't have the best answers, but those are some of the things I am thinking about as an entrepreneur right now. Gosh, that's great advice, Yummy. And I think it's important for us to all go back to our, our foundation. Chelsea, it looks like you wanted to chime in. Sorry, can I, I just want to give a shout out to the SBDC to the, the Colorado SBDC and ACTH. I'll let you talk about this, but I have printed this. Um, on their website, they do have a disaster recovery and continuity guide that helps you prepare, respond, and recover for businesses. Um, I highly recommend our businesses checking this out to to look at how they can begin to plan. This is a phenomenal um, guide in ACTA. If you want to say any more, please do so. Um, please do, ACTA. Thank you, Chelsea and Yemi. You guys are too kind. Um, we just do our job at the SBDC to educate. But, you know, we have, we have, I don't know what to do with my hands on Zoom. <laughs> we have um, a lot of experience in this area of disaster relief and continuity. Um, we produced that book that um, has now been used nationally with the help of other national SVDC partners. And there is a way to prepare for crisis, you guys. There is a way. It's called business continuity. And while this is different than a physical disaster, Yemi hit the nail on the head when he said everything has to do with your financials. If it's a quick disaster, if it's a long disaster, at the end of the day, you need to know if your financials are in place, that your cash flow can float you. And if it can't, what is your unmet need? Um, 
all of that are the words you're gonna hear in times of crisis is what's your unmet need? And that usually boils down to workforce and financials, two big things. And that continuity guide was created to help you pre-plan in case of a physical disaster um, or any type of disaster so that you know where your business is at. So the financial planning piece, what you can do right now is, um, the, the biggest thing is you, before you choose what you want for your business, before you choose what grant or loan, or before you take money, know the amount of money you want. Yummy, again, perfectly said. Um, and, and, and look at your cash flow, look at your planning, and that's what the SBDC does. I mean, that's what our consultants do, and we've recruited more people on the financial side to help you with that planning process and that understanding process. A lot of people don't understand this until they need to. Um, to ask for those questions. I do wanna point out that the network has created a new guide. Um, Chelsea, you will have to print a few more pages. Um, it's a COVID related guide. It's actually called the COVID-19 Small Business Response Resources. It's a new guide now posted on the site that will walk you through some of the different resources and it's um, really easy to follow and really well done. Our network did a great job. but. Business continuity preparedness is something we teach throughout the year. When we get through this, it's really important to keep a focus on that. Thank you very much, Ake. That, that was really helpful information and in what you guys are doing. Um, everybody who's watching this, make sure if you have any questions, the SBDC, the Pikes Peak SBDC, should be one of your very first stops. They're just a gold mine of information and wonderful resources to help you keep moving forward. Now we have a ton of questions. So Sam, jump on in. Let's ask as many questions as we can in the next 10 minutes. Yep, I've got one and then Brandy can ask the next one that came from her viewer on her watch party. So um, Tyson is asking, can you talk about the difference between the small business owners and the self-employed? I'm not sure you want to about that. Tracy, I think that's more of an employment question. I'm sorry, you, you broke up. What was the question again? They said, um, can you talk about the difference between small business owners and self-employed? You know, with unemployment, that's tough because right now, if you would have to have paid, um, if you're a 1099 employer in the gig economy, which is, you know, what everyone's pushing for, which everyone's wanting, if you're not paying into unemployment insurance, at this time, you will not be able to claim any uninsurance claims right now. Part of the stimulus package that's coming out of DC does address that, which is really, really cool and unique for it. So we're waiting for that to come up. Um, but right now, it really depends on, on how you file. Um, if you're an LLC, sole priority, I mean, you know, t it really depends on how you're filing. That information, if you go to Colorado Department of Labor and Employment, COVID-19 information resources, it will define it a little bit for you. But right now, until we hear something from the feds, um, there's not a lot that's available right now in the world of Colorado Department of Labor and Employment. Thank you, Tracy. Um, Brandy, I heard you've got a question. Why don't you go ahead and chime in? Yeah, I sure do. Um, so I had a question that actually came up on my watch party um, from one of our local business owners that says, have any of your contacts in the government agencies indicated their overall pessimism or optimism about the long-term outlook for the economy? Uh, so the real <laughs> answer is it depends on who you're listening to. Um, real, realistic people know that this is gonna be long-term recovery. This is gonna take a while to get out of. Um, it took three years to four years to recover out of 2012 and 13 with fires and floods. This is going, this is a little bit different. Uh, so it's gonna be long-term recovery. Now on the positive side, I don't think there's gonna be a seat in the house at anywhere in this town once the town opens back up again. So possibly the recovery will be faster just because of the local communities coming together and united in a way that you've never seen before nationwide. We have never seen communities collaborate in the way that they have. Additionally, that stimulus package is dumping 
billions more dollars into small business support. We're not exactly sure what that looks like, but there's a small business relief fund that there are no details on right now. Um, but hopefully that includes some grants. There's more loans. There's um, different types of um, funding. There's deferments on payments. Um, up to six months on past disaster loans. There is a deferment on payment on past disaster loans for them a year already. So we have to see what's going to happen. I mean, right now we're not sure. So some people are saying this is doom and gloom and it's going to be worse than 2008 in the recession. Others are saying we could have a very quick pick, pick me up. It's hard to say, but we're hearing both sides. Yeah, you never know. So all we can do is prepare for the worst and hope for the best, right? Sam, do you have any more questions? Yes, lots more if we have time. We have some creative questions. Um, um, Heather's wondering, what resources do you have to support working through the creative process of adapting? Maybe that's already been answered, I'm not quite sure. Um, I think that would... Oh, go ahead. Oh, I mean, and please jump in. I don't wanna be the only one talking, but... Um, on that pikespeaksbdc.org backslash prepare, there's an other section um, which might be interesting um, to look at. Um, on, that, on that section, there's um, some cool links to like the downtown partnership, uh, the um, Visit COS. There's um, a link to, I'm trying to find it, um, of a really cool web uh, Facebook page that Matthew Schnipper with Independent put together on um, culinary, I um, can't remember the full name, I'm sorry, Matthew, um, but on the culinary community and how they're being innovative in the way that they're approaching um, this, uh, the crisis. Um, so there's a lot of really cool um, ideas the Downtown Partnership has posted on how to be innovative as a small business to get through this. Um, there's, there's talks about how waiters are now becoming delivery drivers or doing upskill um, training through workforce center grants to learn new new skills such as social media that they can use moving forward um, for the future of work. So there's a lot of, um, there, there's, there's a lot within the meetup community and on Facebook that is going on helping um, businesses, helping business with innovation. Isn't it cool how everybody's kind of shifting and adjusting and changing their perspective on the business community? I really feel like as we come out of this, we are gonna be so much stronger. So many great things are going to happen. Right now, it's hard because, you know, great things never come out of easy, but great things are going to come out of this hard. Sam, got more questions for us? Yes. Brian Warner, gee, I wonder who that is, um, as asking, what form will the $500 billion being allocated from the most recent bill to small businesses come at? Grants, expansion of SBA loans slash funding? Sam, can you do me a favor and move closer to your computer? You keep coming in and out with your mic. Can you re-ask that question? Sure. So what form will the $500 billion being allocated from the most recent bill to small businesses come as? Grants, expansion of SBA loans, funding? So on the SBA side, am I still unmuted? Uh, there is a deferment on... SBA, past SBA disaster loans till the end of the year, so you don't need to pay on your payments or interest. Um, I believe interest is included. The new package is supposed to um, forgive any disaster loans for a certain amount of time as well. Uh, additionally, um, SBDCs are going to get more support in providing technical assistance, which is incredibly necessary for um, helping with the cash flow analysis financial analysis piece, um, application process. Uh, and then there are, of course, gonna be more loans. Um, I haven't heard much on the grant side, but I'm hoping that is part of the details that um, come out soon. And I know there's a lot on the workforce development side too, Tracy. Tracy, do you wanna chime in on this? You know, it, for us, it's gonna to have to go, once it passes, um, it'll go through the Department of Labor at the Fed level, and then it'll come through the Colorado Department of Labor and Employment, and it's going to be allocated on states, and how they're going to allocate it based on each state, we don't know yet. We're kind of, um, you know, Colorado had a very low unemployment going rate going into this, so I'm not sure how that's going to be affected with it. We hope to have more information um, coming up soon, but, you know, I'm going to be honest, it's going to take a bit to get this information 
to get to, the money to get to us to get it out to you. Um, I wish I could, you know, positivity. Yes, um, it's one of my strengths. So you know, we'll be fine. We'll get it out there. Um, in reality, when you're working with government, uh, I hate to say it, but it's going to take time. Sorry. Makes perfect sense. Well, we are at the top of the hour, 10 a.m. This means we are wrapping up our Facebook Live, our virtual One Million Cups meeting here. So here, really quick, I wanna tell all of you guys, we know there's more questions in queue and we do wanna make sure your questions get answered. So a few options, you can keep your questions here and our panelists can log into the Facebook, um, One Million Cups Facebook and answer the questions directly. Um, but their time is strained, so they may or may not be able to get to that. If your question is super important to you, we have posted their contact information in the comments below. Please reach out to them. They are here to help each and every single one of us, and they want to. So reach out to the SBDC, reach out to the Pikes Peak Workforce Center, reach out to the Colorado Springs EDC. They are working hard for us and they want to know what we need and our voice together as one will help them drive to do the best that they can for us. It was a wonderful time drinking coffee with all of you this morning and thank you so much for joining us and please give a big shout out to all of our panelists. Give them a lot of encouragement in what they're doing and understand they are working hard for us. So give them a big thank you. Thank you, Ekta, Yummy, Chelsea, Tracy, you guys are wonderful community leaders. Thank and we you. Look, thank you. Um, we look forward to seeing the great things that you're doing and working on now and in the future. Till next you. time. Thank you.